Well, good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome. Lynette Zalesny here, your president, to, again, uh, welcome you to a wonderful forum in which we come together in collaboration. This is our budget forum, and today it is our intention to share with you the collaborative work that has been happening between the Academic Senate and administration on bringing forward a budget book. And um, what we're expecting today is, again, celebrating how we do work together, how we do move forward in progress when we work as a team. And again, that's one of our sign signature features. Um, here at CSUB, and so I'm very, very proud of the leadership. Let me call out some people that have been very, very supportive and also instrumental in this work, and let me call out your Senate Chair, Debbie Boschini. Thank you. Debbie, would you stand and please a, a round of applause. And let me also uh, share that I'm very, very indebted to Brian Street for his service in chairing the Budget Committee for Academic Senate. Brian. And most importantly, I am appreciative of Vice President of Business Administration, Tom Davis, and yes, and thank him and his team. <laughs> so today um, is a day for us to hear the high level on the budget book. The budget book is public, um, but we will stay very high level today, about 20 minutes of just the high uh, the high-level bullet points, um, and if there's questions that you have today that we're not able to answer, never fear. We will make sure that we come back and that we get those answers for you. If you have questions that um, you don't feel comfortable sharing publicly, no problem. Um, there's a feedback page, csub.edu slash feedback, and that will also be helpful to you. And we, again, we will be responsive um, as, as we see those questions. Um, with that, we are being live streamed, Antelope Valley. We hope you're listening in because this is uh, your university as well, and we hope you'll have questions. With that, let me introduce Brian Street. Good. All right. Well, thanks for everyone coming. I know we're hopefully dry. All right. We're finally. Um, I'm really surprised every year when we get rain um, here because I don't know if it's going to come. Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm happy to see the rain. I'm happy to see you guys um, here. Uh, I'm Brian Street. I'm an assistant professor in kinesiology. So you wonder why am I chair of the budget and planning committee? Well, um, I I've found out that uh, this is uh, committee has changed from simply a planning committee to now a budget and planning uh, committee. So there's like, some excitement, there's, there's um, change uh, both in culture and in, in practice. Um, and um, it's, you know, it's, it's an exciting um, opportunity for me. Um, this budget forum, um, as uh, Lynette mentioned, is in part to bring out some information that we've been working on, right? There's been some significant changes that's been occurring in the last 24 months that we want to bring to your attention. Um, uh, in part two is so that way you can see what we're doing, but also so that way you can, uh, this is a great opportunity to bring the campus together so that way we can have discussions. We can talk about it, there's a QA, and a right, um, that idea so um, we can um, talk about it. Uh, and the reason being is, I kind of mentioned this idea where the budget and planning committee used to be a planning committee and not a budget committee. And again, this is before my time, but this is, um, you, know, uh, you know, what I've heard. Um, and there seemed to be a, a, a time or a period in which the budgetary, um, you know, transparency and open access wasn't there, right? I'm sure there's been moments, uh, maybe even in your own um, individual cases, where you've had a, an issue related to, you know, budget, uh, uh, for example, and you had no idea where do I go, how do I find this information out, uh, you know, from there, right? Um, and so in part from, from some great leadership, especially recently, we've tried to make a change um, and have an opportunity for you to have access to this information. Um, and so in part, we can fulfill the duties of a, a public institution, right? Open transparency, shared governance, right? I don't think that can occur if we are in a position where we are ignorant or blind um, uh, to particulars. Um, so again, uh, we've made some significant changes and um, uh, by no means am I anywhere near to, to take any of that credit. Um, I slid in and, on the back end uh, when all the hard work was done, and then I can uh, take the bow, I guess, um, uh, for it. But um, I, I do want to uh, recognize a few people, uh, Lynette already did, but our, our chair, um, 
uh, the, the academic senate, uh, Deb Lucini, has been um, vital for this. Um, many, uh, many of the meetings that I've been a part of, and I'm sure you've been part of, she has been championing um, this, this cause. And I don't think we would be at this position otherwise. Um, I also want to acknowledge Aaron Hedge, my, my predecessor in, in this position. He's the vice chair of the academic senate. He's been vital. Um, and again, in setting the groundwork for where, uh, where we are um, um, now. And then there's also some um, uh, campus individuals that you know, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the, Tom Davis's unit's been um, great. I think we started off with maybe we'll meet once a week, and now we've been meeting two or three times a week, uh, which, again, I won't complain um, because we're getting things done. Another name I want to mention is, uh, is Chris Krishna uh, with IRPA. He's been brilliant. He's been put under uh, some heavy load, and we've been requesting data, uh, and I can't speak highly on, enough on, on what he's been doing uh, with that. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and, and lastly, and, and definitely not um, uh, least, is our, our new president. Um, uh, all the conversations I've had um, uh, with her or been involved with, is she has, as, as uh, you know, coming in as maybe as a new face and a new ear and a new eye, seeing where there changes needed to be made. She's listened, right? She's been there to listen, and um, in a lot of instances, in particular, this budget book is a great example. Um, that was a very quick turnaround. My expectations were nowhere near we'd be sitting with a 2018 budget book. And so, again, I really appreciate your leadership on that. I think it's been vital for us um, to get to this position. Yes. <clears throat> um, and so what this forum, like I said, is for is an opportunity for us to speak of what we've, um, where we're at, where we're going as it relates to uh, budgetary issues. We need to have this opportunity. Um, as you think where we are now, new president, new strategic plan, there's significant changes and issues that need to be addressed, and we want to be part of that, right? We want to be, as a, as a campus, as a community, and this information and access to this information is going to allow us to work together, as we should, um, on campus-wide issues as a campus. Um, and I think this will be a great opportunity, the forum in particular, but this new uh, forum access uh, to data, I think, is... Um, and, uh, and budgetary issues is, is an important um, uh, issue. Um, I, on that, I want to bring um, Tom Davis up, and he's going to go through a, a, a few of the kind of, as, as Lynette said, highlights. Uh, the budgetary book, right? This is an, a resource that we can use. We have a budgetary calendar now. In part, this date is, or well, maybe not specific date, but this function is on that calendar that we want to hit these marks, right? And so that we, as a campus, um, can move forward as a collective um, uh, and as a group. And so um, I want to give uh, Tom maybe 15 or 20 minutes to kind of hit the highlights and go through, and then we can hopefully have an opportunity if we have some questions um, that as a campus we can um, uh, have a uh, you know, Q&A and back and forth. Please, Tom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to have this opportunity to talk with you uh, about the budget at CSUB. Uh, and also, certainly thanks to Brian and to Aaron and to Debbie. I've worked with Debbie and Aaron now. It's probably been a couple of years as we've been talking about uh, you know, trying to get a budget book together. I think Aaron started out meeting with me weekly and then started moving into several days a week as well. And, and Brian came in new and said we could meet weekly. And now he's into several days a week with me. And I'm very very happy to be working with these guys uh, on that. Uh, I've got here uh, next to me, I, I, I never go anywhere dealing with IT without my right-hand man, Faust Gordon, and I'm sure all of you, uh, if you don't know him, you should know him. He is our Chief Information Officer. Uh, Faust does a, a tremendous job here at CSUB, and he was very instrumental in helping us to get this uh, budget book along with Chris, as uh, Brian had suggested, but also Michelle uh, Mills, who is our uh, university budget director. Uh, she worked very hard on uh, putting this data together. And Tamara Sherman, who also works with Faust and Michelle and Chris on helping to get the visuals right where it would be very uh, user-friendly, hopefully. That's, that's the idea. So again, thank you, Faust. Thank you, uh, Michelle, Tamara. Um, Hello, Antelope Valley. We're glad that you're a part of this as well. People have told me uh, with this, I'm either doing a tech talk, uh, I think, or maybe, or maybe I'm Tony Stark. 
uh, the Iron Man. So I'm going with the Tony Stark. So I, I like that. I just need to get the mask. My daughter, who's an artist, would be proud to see me in a mask. Uh, anyway, so uh, those of you who have access to computers, uh, if you go to our website, uh, CSUB, you'll notice down in the right-hand area under quick links, we have something called Budget Central. And uh, this is where you can click. It will take you to our Budget Central page, and you'll notice over on the left we have several links for you. Uh, University Strategic Plan, University Strategic Planning Budget Advisory Committee, Academic Senate Budget Planning Committee, and there is our 2017-18 University Budget Book. So you'd simply click there, and it will take you uh, to the Budget Book. Now, the Budget Book um, has uh, various chapters. I think, Faust, if you can scroll down a little bit. Uh, we have nine chapters here. We cover a lot of ground for the university, so I would encourage you at your leisure, go get a uh, peppermint mocha frappuccino, whatever it is you like, uh, and just kind of peruse through. Everything is PDF, everything loads up uh, very well. You can print a single page, you can print the whole book, you can print a chapter. There's lots of options that the team has created. Um, when we start with chapter one, it is the, uh, it will tell you who the University Strategic Planning and Budget Advisory Committee is uh, composed of uh, and what the uh, objectives of the meeting, et cetera. I won't spend a lot of time with there again. I would just encourage you to take a look at it. You could see who your colleagues are who are engaged in the University Strategic Planning uh, Committee, what our charter is, and uh, who's a member of that. Chapter two is simply the organizational chart. So, uh, you know, you could go to the president's area, uh, my area, uh, Provost Sorn, Vice President Wallace, President Zelezny, and you could, uh, you know, get some names, uh, rank, serial number of people who are in those divisions that you uh, may want to see about contacting. Uh, we're gonna come back to chapter three. Uh, that's where we'll spend a little bit more time. Uh, just very briefly, Chapter 4 has information regarding our enterprise operations. So these would be things that generate revenue and are, in essence, self-sustaining. So these would be things like extended university and global outreach, uh, uh, health services, budget, etc. So you can take a look at those types of activities that are uh, really more or less managed outside of the state budget. Um, Chapter five has the base budget. This is where you would find some detail information uh, on the budget if you wanted to know, for example, in academic affairs, it's broken out by the, uh, the division. So we have five divisions on campus. This particular division would be academic affairs. And then it's broken out within the areas within academic affairs, and then the departments within academic affairs, and then whether it's uh, salary expenses or operating expenses. So if you're curious to know how much does the art department have in budget, uh, you can find it here. Uh, chapter six has information. Again, uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, great information here on just kind of our student uh, enrollment activity, everything from full-time equivalents to headcounts. Uh, I believe there's 10 years there. So you can look and see what we have in our profile with respect to resident students, non-resident students, et cetera. Uh, chapter seven uh, is information on faculty uh, staff. So it gives you information here on uh, tenure faculty information. This comes from the California State University's Chancellor's Office. Uh, so the nice thing here is if you scroll down, it has information not only for Bakersfield, but we also have the other campuses in there as well. And uh, this is the data the Chancellor's Office used, so you can be sure it's, you know, it is the definitive data that we have uh, in the CSU. Uh, chapter eight is our university auxiliary organizations. So these are uh, 501c3 organizations. They get their number, it's the Internal Revenue Code, is Internal Revenue Code section 501, chapter C, article three, talks about nonprofit organizations, and we have uh, four of those. Uh, that are part of the California State University's Bakersfield. One is for the Associated Students, Inc. Uh, one is for our grant and research sponsored programs. Uh, let's see, Faust, if you click back to the, um, the list there. Uh, foundation, 
and student union. So you can, and what you will find there is when you click there, it'll go to the audited financial statements. So you can see what the definitive data was for that year as uh, attested by our auditors who issue their opinion. Okay, so we'll go back to chapter three is where we'll spend a little bit of time. So uh, the, the first section of this defines the, uh, what we call the base budget. And so uh, this represents the total source of funds that we get and the use of funds that we distribute from the state. And it, it includes a couple of pieces. We get, we get the general appropriations from the chancellor's office, which comes through the legislation. We also generate tuition and fee revenue uh, from the students with respect to the portion uh, that they pay. And then we also get money for the state university grant. But the state university grant money is earmarked for the students in the form of financial aid. So we really are what you would call an agency. We don't really get to use that money. It's not like we could take that money and invest it in supplies or hire people and put salaries and benefits on that. It, it is mandated uh, to go to the students. So when we talk about the base budget, the base budget includes state and university grants. But when we talk about the net operating budget, that's exclusive of the state university grants. That actually would represent the money we actually have available to do our business here at CSUB. The uh, next section is the uh, shared governance. I don't know if we can reduce that down, uh, Faust. And what we may want to do is pop in and back out so they can see how the link brings them to a particular page. Um, so if we go to shared governance, it's going to bring you to this slide here. What this is trying to do for you is show you in picture form how governance is working at California State University Bakersfield. So the inputs into the budget process come from the five divisions, including the president's office. Within certain divisions, we also get information from other places. So for example, the Vice President of Academic Affairs, Provost Zorn, she not only gets information from her Academic Affairs Council, which is made up of all the folks who directly report to her, but she also gets information from the Academic Senate. And the Academic Senate has four committees that help it govern uh, what it would like to do, of which you can see budget and planning committee is the second one to the right there. That's the one that Brian chairs and that um, two years ago I was asked to be an ex officio and so I'm an ex officio as is Provost Sorn. So we serve on that committee. So the academic senate will, uh, through uh, recommendations from the budget planning committee, ultimately will send a recommendation to the cabinet and to the president as to what their thoughts are in the budget process. Uh, in my area, not only do my direct reports give me information, everything from human resources to facilities to information technology, but we also have an information technology advisory council, uh, which is made up of administrators, faculty, associates, student inc, members, and this group talks about information technology and what is our strategy related to that and what do we think about technology and what do we think we need to do with respect to a strategic plan moving that forward. So that information would come to me as the chair and I would share that with the group. Uh, Vice President of Student Affairs, uh, Dr. Wallace, not only does he get information from his team, which includes everything from health services to dining to a, um, various things, but also the Associated Students, Inc. will provide information to him from the governing body as to what they think about uh, budget and where we need to go. And then, of course, uh, University Advancement Vice President Martin uh, gets information from his team. So all of those inputs are brought up to uh, the President's Cabinet, and then we have this University Strategic Planning and Budget Advisory Committee that chats about this, and ultimately um, information is provided to the president, who uh, of course makes the definitive decisions as to uh, what the institution is going to be doing moving forward. So that's that's just kind of an organizational view of how we govern uh, budget. So if we exit out of there, 
And now if we come to the budget calendar cycle, Brian mentioned this a little earlier. So you'll note there's actually three columns here because three different budgets are going on at the same time for California State University budget. The first, the first column is the California State University. So here we, if we come to where we are in December, and we look back a month in November, many of you have been reading in the papers, you know, the LA Times, San Francisco Chronicle, whatever. They're talking about what the Board of Trustees have adopted and submitted to the governor's office with respect to the 1920 budget year. So it's not this budget year, it's next budget year. If we follow the calendar for the California State University, in January, the governor will issue his preliminary budget to the legislation. In February, the legislature will provide analysis of the budget. In March, the CSU has what they call Advocacy Day, and representatives from each of the 23 campuses, we go up there in mass and we meet with all of our legislators that are in our various constituent uh, areas to advocate for funding of support of the Board of Trustees uh, budget for the California State University. In April, there's more legislative hearings. In May, the governor comes out with what is known as his May revision, he or she's May revision. Uh, and then in June, the state ad uh, budget is actually adopted. Once that happens, now we come back into the second column where we're at California State University Bakersfield. Now we would get the information from the chancellor's office as to uh, what is our budget. So if we come down in our area now, we're here we are in December, and Brian referred to this, we have on our calendar uh, each December, we would have this budget forum where the chair of the budget planning committee and myself would update the campus as to what's new, what are we doing. Uh, when we move into March, uh, of course, many of us uh, will be participating in Budget Advocacy Day. Uh, but also during the month of March, we'll be soliciting that information from uh, Academic Senate, from uh, the ASI, from the ITAC, from our direct reports, to get that information so in April we can have the University Strategic Planning Budget Advisory Council meeting, have all the information that's brought for that committee uh, to consider and discuss, uh, talk about some priorities, and then uh, talk to the president, and ultimately president would make some kind of decision. Then the third column is the budget planning committee. So remember that's a subcommittee of the Academic Senate, which uh, Brian chairs. Its cycle, of course, really only runs from September to April, May, because that's uh, when faculty is here. Uh, so they have their meeting, and right now they are analyzing the 2017-18 budget book, because that's the most recent data we have in real time. Uh, they will analyze that, and then in February, they will make uh, whatever their recommendation is going to be to the Academic Senate, who then in March will deliberate and ultimately get a recommendation. And then they will also let us know in April before they break for the summer, they will let Provost Zorn and myself know, is there anything additionally they might want to add to the budget book or not add to the budget book, but maybe just some additional data that they found during this cycle might be helpful to know and perhaps could we do that? And so we start the cycle all over again. Uh, the next uh, item here is the, okay, the base budget operating fund. So this is a really nice report for you to go and look at. And what this report shows is, well, where did the money come from uh, in 2017-18? And you can see that the budget, the base budget was $130 million. The net operating budget was $111 million because we received $18.6 million in state university grants. Uh, what that means is the money we actually had available only represented 85.71% of the budget. When we think about, okay, well, what did the campus do with those monies, then that's where we get to the use of funds. How did we use the money? Well, the way we allocated it in 1718 was 40.3% of the base budget went to academic instruction, 53.18% went to academic affairs, including the amount that went to instruction. 
Business affairs was 1171. You can see information technology, 6.5%. Uh, uh, if we scroll down, you can see that uh, we, we do show uh, athletics at 4.68% of the base budget, total student affairs at 6.95% of the base budget. Uh, again, you can see that 81% is actually money that we have to allocate. The other 4% is really tied up in benefits. Benefits are very uh, expensive in the CSU, runs about 50% now of salaries. Uh, so that's very substantial. The other interesting thing to note is uh, down below, uh, if you can scroll up just a little bit more, total salary and benefits represent 75.14% of the base budget. Now remember, that includes state university grants, which we don't have access to. So if we said, okay, how much does salary and benefits represent of our actual net operating budget? That's actually 87.67% of our budget. So we are... Uh, very well invested in our people, which makes sense uh, being higher education, but it does create challenges for us, right? If we run into budget issues, we don't have a lot of discretionary money that's non-personnel related to address any items uh, we may have. So, all right, let's so back out of there. Um, and then lastly, uh, budget salary allocation. This is a nice chart that shows of that 87% salary and benefits, where does it go? I don't know if you can close that down a little bit. Um, what this shows is 50% of it is invested in our uh, uh, faculty, 32% uh, is invested in our staff, uh, a little over 15%, 15 15.63s, uh, management personnel, and a uh, little shy of 2% is uh, student activity. So that, that's a, a broad, uh, quick view of uh, where we are uh, with the institution. I think you can scroll back there. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll, I'll just pause and, uh, you know, Brian, we can fill any Q&A you all might have, and we're happy to uh, answer any questions. Again, thank you, thank you for your time. Again, I encourage you to go to the website spend some time, noodle around with it. If you have questions, feel free to contact uh, Brian or myself. And, uh, <laughs> and please come to the mic. Uh, Bruce, we're gonna let you come up. Please identify yourself. Thanks so much. I'm Bruce Hartzell. Uh, can you tell us where on the site we can find actuals and where we can see where things balance out in terms of budget versus actuals? Uh, so the actuals would show up in the, uh, if we scroll down to the base budget uh, operating by department account, that will show you, well, I apologize, that will show you the original base and the final budget. The difference between original base and final budget is the original base is your reoccurring budget you get year over year. Final budget will include things if you get allocated one-time monies for something or if you had open purchase orders. Actuals will actually be showing up in uh, Questica. I forgot to mention that as a product. We are in the uh, process of working with uh, California State University Northridge and uh, Cal Poly uh, to uh, bring out this software tool called Questica. Uh, we, had hoping, we had hoped to bring that out a month ago, but we identified some programming issues into the software and we didn't want to roll it out with known errors. And so we are now, uh, I'm working with the other two CFOs from those campuses uh, to get the data. But uh, Bruce, that's where you would be able to go and look at, look at actual activity compared against the uh, budget activity. Uh, and, and you'll have great drill down capabilities with that to be able to look much like this report here. You'll be able to go down to the uh, department level, salary benefits, you know, operating expenses. And, and, and we're very uh, anxious to get that out. We look forward to getting that out, but we want to do it right. Uh, my best guess right now would be hopefully before the end of the fiscal, this fiscal year, we get it out sometime in the spring is kind of where we're at. I have a call this week actually with uh, my colleagues and then we're probably going to get the teams together and sort out a couple of things. I guess the best way I could say it is we've, we've kind of marched, we started on the one yard line. We're like first and 10 at the, at the other folks 20 yard line and we got to we got to punch it into the end zone. So we're, we're, we're pretty close. We've made really good progress, but again, we want to make sure it's right as best we can. We know there's going to be 
things folks will identify, but uh, that's where we're at with that. Great question, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, so please go to the mic, John. Yeah, we want, we want all good ideas so that uh, if there's anything that we could use in the strategic plan, we'd love to do that. Thank you. Right. The first one is a question. The second one, I'm sure, is a question or a comment or observation. So the first one, you listed state university grants as a revenue source. Yes. So state university grants are basically a forgiveness of tuition, and our campus has a disproportionate number of students who receive forgiveness. So is this a net transfer from the system making up for the foregone revenue from our high percentage of state university grant recipients? So the, uh, what, what happens here, uh, John, is the uh, chancellor's office identifies based off reports we send to them year over year, and they tell us we uh, want you to award this $18 million, uh, to students. And then, so, so they give it to us as part of our funding, but they earmark it specifically for awarding through the state university grant mechanism, so which we turn around and we do that. And so each year we have a report that Michelle files with the chancellor's office to show what the actual awarding so, was. So in essence, it's yes. So they're, they're actually funding the state university grants at yeah. some percentage for our campus. It's not all yeah, campus. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the second one is I really like the calendar there. I'm assuming that's aspirational because I don't remember that reflecting what we've done in the past. That's, uh, that's is this correct. What we're planning to do? Come here. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, so, did everybody hear that question? He was asking about the calendar. Remember, this has been a moving target. This has been something that uh, certainly Aaron and, and Debbie, myself, uh, uh, Brian, uh, you know, last year we kind of got a lot of this kicked off, and, and now we're trying to get in the rhythm. And I will say there's going to be adjustments to this as well. Certainly with uh, President Zelezny here, you know, uh, she needs the opportunity to kind of look at this and, and, and uh, you know, absorb it. And then she'll have some ideas, certainly as we make sure we're tying into the strategic plan because uh, budgets don't make any sense without a strategic plan. So this is going to be very critical that we understand the feedback that she receives uh, from the community and, and the direction we adjust with the strategic plan and certainly uh, the budget process would then fall in line to help support us moving moving forward as an institution. So yes, it's aspirational. I think it's uh, in pretty good shape, but yes, we'll have some tweaks as we as we move it along and then eventually we'll get into a rhythm where, where we're all feeling pretty good about where we're at. Is that, is that a fair statement, Aaron, Debbie? Yeah. Any other questions? No? Anything from social media? Jennifer, I know we're tracking social media to see if anybody has any. If you have any questions out there, Antelope Valley or wherever, feel free to email them in. Nothing yet. Nothing? Okay. Right. I thought budget was going to get a lot of questions. Uh, Bruce, go ahead. A much more detailed question. If I understand correctly, we got something like an extra million plus dollars specifically earmarked for tenure track faculty. Some of us are really interested in knowing where we are in the process of hiring tenure track faculty for next year and if there is in fact a commitment to do what the legislature intended with that money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hiring them. No. Uh, um, uh, as you, there was an email that we put out that the president allocated um, six positions, which I think as a group we, um, we worked it out and it was about 850, uh, 830, $830,000. Um, there was an additional, an additional, sorry, 1.52 million. So just to be clear, Bruce, we're, uh, there was kind of two sets of uh, numbers here. No, no, but no, no, I want to make it clear there's additional, there's a million dollars um, of funds that was allocated, uh, sorry, left to be allocated um, that the, uh, the Budget and Planning Committee to the Senate last year said if there was any additional funds, those funds would be a priority towards um, tenure track faculty. And then the one, there's a $1.52 million um, uh, allocation to, um, uh, again, new faculty hires that is part of the, uh, uh, the, the GI 2025 so those are two separate entities. So at this stage, we have six new hires that will be uh, in the pipeline. I'm not exactly sure, uh, 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 Dr. Zorn, is, it, is there one for, each, one for each campus? Sorry, 
Um, <laughs> there, What's there, that campus uh, school, sorry. There's one for each school, yes. so that's four. Yeah. There's a fifth one that is for sustainability, yeah. and that'll be an interdisciplinary uh, faculty member. And then there's one for the Antelope Valley campus. Thank you. Yeah. So to that point, we have those those six positions that are earmarked as new hires. Right. And I think I would add to that as well. And uh, Debbie uh, visited with the cabinet uh, the other day, and we talked about this. Uh, you know, the university has added, I want to say, Debbie, 21 uh, track positions over the last couple of years. Plus, then the six makes 27. Is that correct? Okay, net increase of 20, uh, and then plus the six. So, uh, you know, President Mitchell, uh, you know, was very supportive of, of tenure and uh, was investing in that ahead of funding, if you will. And so we're happy to see funding coming in to help true up uh, what we can do. So we're actually, you know, the CSU would have said with a million five, that's 11 basically, uh, but we're at 26, so, uh, you know, we're making good progress there. Any other questions? You don't want to give me a mic too long, we'll be here all night. Um, <laughs> Um, so, uh, in, to kind of, uh, kind of dovetail or finish this, the, the, the idea is this, this gives shared governance. This is why we're doing this. And so, if you have questions, or you have concerns, some of these documents, that budget calendar you saw, uh, for instance, John, that is a living document, right? We, we changed it just a few weeks ago, right, mm -hmm. to make it more right. accurate. This budget book, right, this is based on a, a similar campus to ours but it may not fulfill the needs of our campus. Maybe we need to change or add, right? And so, in part, we want, we, this, um, this information is here for us to use as a campus so we can make decisions that are gonna be appropriate and based on actual data uh, on our campus rather than necessarily hearsay or, or anecdotal information, right? So if you see an, an opportunity for change, please you know, contact us, contact, uh, like the budget, the Senate, and, and uh, and Tom's unit. Please. Oh, yep. I want to clarify some oh. numbers. Clarify some numbers. There we go. <laughs> um, these are six expansion hires. That's beyond the 15 searches that are already in progress to take place this year. So we are doing 21 searches this year. Um, that expansion brings us to 28 expansion hires over the past two years. So in terms of expansion hires, we've had 28, or we will have with these extra t six. Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> number, and that's gonna bring the total of expansion hires over the last three years to 34. Yeah, this is for my Senate colleagues, Brian and Aaron and Debbie. If um, the Senate actually is going to weigh in on the budget and be able to do that, I suggest the timeline needs to be pushed forward a little bit because there's going to be a lot of discussion in the Senate as well as in budget advisory or budget and planning committee. So having done this at the state level, I know there's a lot of debate on these things, and so we're going to have to start working on that as soon as we get some numbers. We have time. Thank <laughs> you, Debbie. Okay, so I do want to uh, thank the president, particularly. She came in and on very short notice, instead of pausing and saying, let's take a look at what we're doing, she said, oh no, we need budget transparency. So we made an immediate uh, not only sustained effort with her support, but she accelerated our progress. So I want to thank her for that. <clears throat> and I've been here for 15 years, and to see this is just a joy. And I know we have a lot of work to do, but at least now we have the information with which to do it. 
So I did want to say in terms of tenure density, I know we have folks from all across campus and I don't want to take over yet another meeting talking about tenure density, but for those of my faculty colleagues in the room and in AV that haven't been able to hear the Senate conversations, this is an ongoing initiative. Our tenure density has slid consistently for the past 10 years and in spite of the 20, we. Uh, it experienced with a net gain since last year, in spite of the six that we're already planning on hiring for next year, we will still decrease going into next year, is the projection. And the reason why is because we're taking in so many students, and these aren't, these aren't our enemy, these are our neighbors and our children, and these are folks that we wanna provide this education to. And I wanna reassure you, the Senate is not saying we don't wanna take in more students. We want to continue to provide the access to our community that they deserve. So we do want to continue to increase enrollment over time. The problem is that our increases in enrollment have outpaced our hiring. So at this point, what we need to do is continue to really attack the tenure density issue through all the means we can. There's not only hiring that fixes tenure density problems, but it's important to keep it on the table for discussion because over the past 10 years when we haven't been looking at the information is when we've experienced this dramatic decrease in tenure density. So from lack of information, we had a lack of conversations that would have revealed that we had an ongoing problem that really should have gotten a little bit more press earlier. And the Senate has talked about it, but the whole campus wasn't aware that the conversation was really going on to the degree that you are now. So with those 20 hires, it's stabilized for one year. Our tenure density in as recently as 2014 was 56%. It's currently 51.9 for last year. We hired a net gain of 20 tenure track faculty. And because of the <clears throat> additional lectures we also had to hire to accommodate enrollment increases, our tenure density did not budge. So the commitment that it's going to take to improve that situation is going to require lots of information sharing, lots of discussion. We would really like to see uh, another 20 this year. We know 20 is unrealistic. The legislature gave us the input that it's the 1.52 million that was intended to be set aside for tenure track hiring and that would fund 11 hires for next year. And so we're still trying to talk that through with the president and the provost as far as whether the number would be six or 11. Right now it's six, and that is a heck of a lot better than zero. So I thank you for listening and for trying to work on this, but we also know the budget's a really, it's a hard problem to fix, and we've got years and years of habits that have caused us to spend the way we do. And so if you hear about tenure track spending, it's because your canary is tweeting, and we're trying to say, you know, the campus has been experiencing a problem. And it's much better to discuss it openly and try to find solutions than to complain about it in offices. So this is our opportunity to bring it to your attention. There was a point, eight years ago, we were at 60%. If we hadn't added the six, next year we would be down in the 40s. So the reason why this is a big issue in this conversation is because it is actually a big issue on our campus. So I wanna thank everybody who's been participating. And I understand that what I've said doesn't entirely agree with what the president and the provost shared with you, but that's okay. These are the interpretations of the, the, the budget that we're trying to work through and we're doing the good work and that I can get up and say this at a meeting with my colleagues in the room, wonderful. So that being said, that's my explanation of, is it zero, is it six, is it 11? Uh, six is great, 11 would be better. Uh, my uh, preliminary analysis says that in order to correct the downhill slide, it would need to be closer to 15 or 20. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kegley. And uh, by the way, actually, I think we, we, we are actually on the same page. We know it's a serious issue. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna say that we're in the same the same work together. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, I just wanted to say on the statewide Senate a number of years ago, we did um, had a task force that analyzed the different roles and responsibilities of faculty 
And I think we need to recognize that part of our problem also is that fac our, you know, our number of faculty have to cover a number of roles, including, and there's release time, and that takes faculty out of the classroom, and then that leads to hiring of lecturers. And so I'd like to see us really sit down and look at what our faculty are actually doing and what we want to invest in uh, with faculty, because we have all these responsibilities, and, and some small departments have lost faculty to do very important roles, but they have nobody to teach, and so then you bring in part-timers, and I think this is an important part of the analysis. Still have time. President's still here. Provost's still here. <laughs> Yeah, we, we don't want to waste this opportunity. This is time for us to be together to hear each other's thoughts, ideas, concerns, questions, and this is important time. Please come forward. Hi, Randy Schultz, Antelope Valley. Hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> Uh, I know our budget is complicated because we have pieces of our budget embedded in everybody else's budget. You know, um, our instructors are your instructors, our faculty are your faculty. And it would be nice to be able to see, uh, we've made an attempt uh, last year to, to find out, you know, how much do we actually cost and how much do we actually bring in. And, you know, to our surprise, we actually bring in more money than we cost and that felt really good. So, that, you know, we actually... Um, are bringing funding to the to the uh, to the campus. So please stop saying that we cost you money. We don't. <laughs> and uh, but it's nice to see this um, the openness with the budget because it also helps us to to see you know how we fit into the the big picture. So thank you. I don't really have a question. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Elaine Correa, and I was just wondering, um, we've been speaking a lot about the faculty, and I'm, of course, a faculty member, so I appreciate that, but I do want to be cognizant of other people in the room, such as the staff, and I'd like to know, um, in terms of the budget, uh, what are the projections for staff? If you could give us any ideas. Uh, you mean as far as uh, ad additional staff? Um, we really don't have any plans on that right now. As you know, we don't, we don't have a lot of resources. We, we don't get a lot uh, from the state, and we certainly, as Debbie articulated, we are very cognizant of the tenure issue. We're very cognizant uh, of our students. We, we care about our students uh, first and foremost. It's about the students. It's why we exist. It's why we do what we do. And so from the staff perspective side, you know, we're, we're always have been asked to do a lot with little and we, we continue to do that. Sure, there are needs and we try to address those when they become critical. Uh, but, but by and large, we really are trying to be uh, very respectful of the, of the limited resources we have. Uh, many of you have heard me speak before. I don't say best practice. I tell my team best in class because best in class assumes a resource limitation. Best, best practice, if you have the money, you can do it. But if you don't have the money, what can you do organizationally, uh, through technology, through process improvement, to uh, be as efficient as you can to support the enterprise, which is a teaching and learning enterprise. Uh, for our students, so we we you know we 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 do get the requests uh, certainly, and we we typically deal with them on a one by one fact and circumstance situation based on the criticalness of the need, uh, and quite frankly, some of these things happen to us just through federal or state mandates. You know, all of a sudden uh, we need to do something. I could use, for example, Title IX. I mean, where was Title IX a decade ago? Wasn't a whole lot going on. Well, Title IX, there's a ton going on now, and, and we've had to staff up with multiple people, and every campus across the country is having to do that as well. And those are costs that are put upon us and critical needs that we, we don't have a choice. We have to staff it up, otherwise we could uh, subject ourselves to potential fines or, or you know, not following uh, federal state uh, rules. So it's always a, uh, it's a very complex process, and uh, I'm very appreciative of the work that uh, 
again, that Aaron and Debbie have done to, to help kind of get us here. I'm certainly happy to, to support that. I think the more, uh, I think this budget book will help us to have the right conversations, uh, to hopefully be ships that aren't passing in the night, but be ships that are connecting and we can have the conversation and, and collectively together uh, make recommendations to our president as to uh, what our sense is as an institution and how we're moving forward. And she's certainly on page with everything uh, we're doing as well. So thank you for the question, though. That's, that doesn't get asked very often, so appreciate that. Yes, Aloria. Hi, Alaria Pesco from ASI. So this comment really is for Brian, Debbie, and Aaron. So in ASI, we see a lot of students coming in with class assignments um, related to the budget. And so a lot of students coming in because they're seeking to find out where they can find out this information. So it would be really helpful for me if we could have um, within BPA, MPA, whatever departments that are having faculty do these assignments with students for them to have a drill down maybe with Tom on the budget book so they know where they can get that information. Obviously, I'm happy to sit with the students and show them this, but really I think is a great starting point for faculty to know kind of how to assign out these projects yeah. based on this wonderful new yeah. tool that yeah. we have. So uh, any yeah. help would yeah. be very yeah. helpful. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Laurie, th uh, thank you very much for that comment. Actually, actually, just this week, I had, a, I had an email from a student uh, asking questions that are in the budget book. I know. I'm sorry, and Tom. I sent her to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you did because, uh, you know, her questions, it, it, was, it was so nice for me to be able to not only, one, obviously respond, but also say, and by the way, here's the link. I sent it to her. Click here and, you know, uh, get, get, get a Starbucks and, uh, you know, have a look. And, and so I think a lot of the answers to her questions are going to be right there. So that's an excellent point, and I, I, would, I would absolutely encourage that. The more we want everybody on this campus to be aware of the budget book. We want them to look at it. We want them to, you know, ask questions. Brian and I, again, are, are totally open to, you know, if, there, if there's something that uh, begins to resonate that uh, there's a gap that's missing we need to address, we can certainly, uh, you know, take a look at that and figure out how we, how we might get there. Hi, this, excuse me, this is Aaron Hegde. I have a question about uh, deferred maintenance. I know we're pretty behind on that on this campus and system-wide. Uh, is there any plans of trying to get more money for deferred maintenance? <laughs> uh, I'm just returning from the chancellor's office, actually, just by the minute to get here on time. And deferred maintenance is actually huge um, as we're approaching the new governor. Um, so, uh, fingers crossed, um, we are in the billions in the CSU on deferred maintenance. Um, coming from a campus that was sinking in deferred maintenance, it's so nice that we have, um, we have a list that is more manageable. Now, it's not to say that we're going we're gonna to be able to uh, get everything fixed tomorrow, but um, we're going to need advocacy. Um, and, and so the presidents were already talking about Hill Day with the Senate, with students on deferred maintenance. So we're going to need a lot of money. Uh, President Leslie, that's an excellent point. Uh, and, and I will add to that, uh, certainly as chief financial officers, I meet with the other 23 as well as the system CFO, and we have this conversation regularly and often. And many of you uh, may be aware or may not be aware, you know, the legislation changed the funding model a few years back. It used to be that they would fund the California State University for capital and deferred maintenance and then fund us separately for our operating budgets. And they decided they didn't have a, as much money, so they would just put it on the CSU. So they said, we're going to take away your capital funding, and guess what? You need to address your facility issues out of your operating budget. Well, okay, so that's a recipe for disaster. So what the Chancellor's Office has been trying to do, and I know they did again in this request, basically what we're doing is we're going to the legislation and saying, you know, we would like X millions of dollars to be funded to us reoccurring that we can utilize to go borrow money to fix our infrastructure. Because if they can provide us a revenue stream where we can service debt, then between 23 CFOs, we think we can figure out how to address the, the billion dollars questions. But without funding and resources, it doesn't happen. Now, having said that, and all of us, uh, you know, we have our different opinions about legislation and Sacramento and their ability to, to do certain things. But as an example, last year, they came out and gave us like just, we had asked for, I think, uh, uh, 15 million of reoccurring funding 
for deferred maintenance, and, and they came back and gave us like 20 million one time. Well, we can't do anything with, that doesn't even scratch the iceberg, but if they had given it to us in permanent reoccurring, then we could leverage it through debt servicing. So these are the challenges that we run into, and I know that the, as President Zelensky said, the, the, uh, the Board of Trustees, if you go look at their uh, 1920 budget request, is very robust, is very, uh, the most they've ever asked for at, I think, in many, many years. And part of that is due to the fact that the incoming governor was lieutenant governor. He sat on the board of trustees. He's had conversations with Chancellor White. He's had conversations with the executive team. There's a sense that we just need to go and, and press our case and, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So it is a very bold ask and, and hopefully, Aaron, if we were in fact able to get that, uh, we, we might get some funding to address these critical needs. Yeah, and I think there's gratitude to the faculty uh, trustee who's been really the champion and the advocate for this yeah. from San Jose, so we're really yeah. appreciative of that. Um, we are at time, but I do want to make sure everyone that has a question or a thought has had the opportunity to share it. If you have, John, you have another thought? Going to triple dip here? Yeah, sorry. I actually have two comments. One is just an addendum. The legislature actually did put um, debt service into our base budget, but I think it was based upon an unrealistic years where the construction and deferred maintenance was yeah. not being addressed, yeah. and so right. they underfunded that, yeah. and they're yeah. working on it. But the other thing I wanted to say, I remember sitting here about six or seven years ago being very frustrated, and thank you so much. We've made more progress, I think, on budget transparency and having plans in place in the past few months than we've done in the previous many, many years. And so thank you to Tom and certainly to President Selesny and, and Provost Zorn and our Senate leaders. I'm, I'm ecstatic at the Do progress we've made. So thank you very much. Shared governance at work. With that, let me again remind you, if you have thoughts, questions that were not addressed today that, that you're reflecting on, if you have feedback for how we can make this a better uh, either process or a better document, we're open to hearing that. And the feedback page is csub.edu slash feedback. Um, and we, we get lots of feedback. It's great, great to get feedback. So let me thank you for your participation in this very, very important forum. And again, Brian, our Senate Chair, our Vice President Davis, thank you very much. A great session.